Hey, welcome back to the Rev Fire Group Conference and Expo. My name is Chris McLoon. I'm with Fire Apparatus and Emergency Equipment, and I will be uh, your host for the day. We had a great day yesterday. Uh, we talked about two E1 rigs. One was the HR100 Aerial, and the other one was a custom pumper. Uh, it was a great day. We had a great conversation, not only uh, with our guests, who I'll get to in just a second, but also with you, our attendees, who were really good with the questions yesterday. So please keep that up. We've, uh, you can see the Ask a Question box on your screen. Anything we talk about today, please make sure that you, uh, that you ask about it. We'll get you uh, an answer with, uh, with, with our guests. Or later, if you go to the Rev Product Showroom, you'll be able to, to meet with Rev representatives and they'll be able to help you there. Now today, we've got two unique fire trucks. One is an industrial pumper and the other is an R frig. Now, you are, you are right now with a bunch of people who just love talking about fire trucks. Uh, and these are two, you know, when you get onto the industrial side and you get onto the ARF side, these are really unique rigs, but they're really cool rigs. And everybody knows when you see an ARF truck coming down the street, it's a real head turner. But in addition to that, these are trucks that really bring together a lot of the capabilities of E1 and a lot of what it can bring to the market, not only on the industrial side or the aircraft rescue firefighting side, but also on the municipal side. And I think today you will see a lot of features that you that you might think to yourself, geez, you know, that, that would work really good on, uh, on my structural rig. So before we get into that, let me talk about our our guest today. First of all, we've got Jeff Gaskin again today. He is, uh, he is a 42-year 42 42 year veteran of the fire service. He is also with East West Fire Apparatus Consultants. He gets around on the conference circuit. I've seen him speak a number of times, and this is a gentleman who really knows, uh, knows his stuff about fire trucks. On the rev side, we also have some product specialists with us today. We have Zach Schultz, who's the E1 International Sales Coordinator. He's there on your left. And we have Derek Dias, the E1 government and ARF sales representative. They're going to talk to us today. Once we see each video, they'll be there to answer our questions and to give us a little tour of the truck on the scene there. Now, I'd like to cut back to our booth uh, and our desk at the booth where we have Larry Daniels. He's the director of sales at E1, and I will not be forgetting his name today. If you were here yesterday, that was a that, that was a good one. And we also have Mike Vernig, who is the vice president of sales for the Rev Fire Group, and he has a few words he'd like to, to say today as well. Mike, take it away. Thank you, Chris, and thank you again for hosting this event. Uh, very, very exciting day yesterday. Jeff, I also want to thank you for lending your expertise to the, uh, to the event yesterday, your experience. Uh, lastly, I want to thank everybody who participated. Uh, the outpouring yesterday after our meeting was tremendous. We had a lot of people come through our portal, request meetings. Uh, we had a tremendous number of one-on-one -on -one meetings between Larry and Justin. And, you know, the idea here was to try to create an environment like a trade show where you get to interact with us, we get to show off our products, which is something we haven't been able to do much this year and we love to do, and then to make contact and, and take it to the next step. So to Clarion, to you, Chris, to our marketing team. Um, no one's ever done this before, and it's pretty exciting that we are bringing something like this to the market. So we hope one day we get back to uh, real trade shows and meeting you uh, at your departments and doing demos. But in the meantime, this is uh, the best we can do. The other thing I wanted to say is we're going to start having some fun with this. Um, we've got a lot of brands that we're going to be representing over the next four weeks. And although we compete with each other, we also are a family and we like to have some fun. So we're going to try to include a little bit of that fun into this. And we promise exciting products and some new product announcements that will be coming in, in later episodes. So thank you for joining in and thank you for being a part of this. And Chris, uh, thank you for, oh, for hosting. Oh, it's our pleasure, Mike. And that really is a, a really great point to bring up about how uh, you're, you're creating that environment as close as we can get to the trade show. This, these are unprecedented times. We've, had to, we've really had to, to take a look at things and see how to use the digital solutions that we have. We've, all, we've almost been pushed into, into using the digital solutions that, that, that are there before us. So this is exciting for us too. Like you said, this is the first time this kind of thing has been done. So uh, just to let you guys know, everybody uh, who is registered for this, if you missed yesterday or if you have to leave today for some reason, which of course nobody will, 
Um, this is uh, this is live. It's interactive, but it's also archived and it is, will also be on demand. So for Wednesday through Friday this week, that's your chance to review everything that we've talked about. We had a great we had a great class yesterday, a great FDIC class. We'll be bringing another one to you next week. I'll go I'll go through what next week's going to bring in just a little while. But uh, Wednesday through Friday this week, make sure you go back to Rev Truck Expo. Go to the giveaway section. You're going to have your uh, several chances to win different uh, different pieces of E1 swag. So uh, I don't want to don't want to delay us too much longer. So uh, let's get into the uh, the Saudi Aramco industrial pumper. I'm Zach Schultz, International Sales Coordinator here at E1. Today we're going to feature a multi-purpose industrial for one of our biggest international customers, Saudi Aramco. This truck is part of a 13-truck order, and since 2003, E1 has built and delivered more than 100 fire apparatuses to Saudi Aramco. Aramco chose an E1 Cyclone chassis with a 500 horsepower export engine, 4,000 Allison transmission. The cab is a 58 inch medium cab with a seating capacity for six occupants. Five seats have SCVA seat backs with smart dock strap free docking stations that offer single motion insertion and hands free release. The truck features a VMUX electrical system with two Vista touchscreen displays on the driver and officer engine cover. Since this truck is going to be operated in a hot climate in Saudi Arabia, E1 provided the cab with a hot climate insulation package. This insulation package ensures the maximum cooling capacity for the fire crew. Here we have a 28 inch stainless steel front bumper with a full width multi-depth tray and a six inch raised diamond plate lid. Inside this tray we offer us two 60 foot hydraulic reels that are part of a three tool HRT system made by Hamatro. The center tray is designed to hold any tool combination of hydraulic tools being used on scene. The truck has a Hale AFG high performance single stage pump with a 2000 GPM rating. It also has a Williams Hot Shot 2 300 foam system and a Trident foam pump. The tank capacity on this truck is 1930 gallons with 1430 gallons being water and 500 gallons being class B foam. The customer incorporated two speed lays into this pump module. Each speed lay has a poly tray the poly trays hold 200 feet of inch and three quarter hose for this particular configuration. Inside the pump module, we have low pressure air reel that's 200 feet long, as well as on the other side, 200 feet of electric cord reel. Having the both reels inside the pump module frees up a lot of space in, inside the body compartments. Aramco requested that we provide a cover for their top mount pump panel. As you can see, that there are multiple gauges, electrical components, and switches that they wanted to protect from the climate in Saudi Arabia. As you can see, this door comes down rather smoothly and closes. This door is going to protect from rain, debris, anything that you'll see in, in the hot climate over in Saudi Arabia. We offered a powered awning. This awning is going to provide adequate shade over the crosswalk during pump operations. There's a total of nine compartments on this body, four on each side and one at the rear. The deck gun is an Elkhart 7400 EXM Scorpion with a Ranger 2.0 Hydrochem nozzle. The customer requested a Zyco drop down ladder rack. Typically, you don't offer ladders on an industrial. However, Aramco had found a need for them. This ladder rack is going to hold a 24 foot two section, a 14 foot roof ladder, two pipe poles, and one 10 foot attic ladder. This truck features a full perimeter Whalen LED lighting. We have lighting on the front cab brow. We have seam lighting on each side of the body as well on the rear. This truck also has a Wilbert Night Scan light tower with six 120 volt Whalen LED light heads. In the B1 compartment, we have a 500 pound dry chemical system plumbed to the deck gun as well as a dual agent booster reel. The dry chemical vessel is, is mounted in a rollout slide master tray. This provides ease of maintenance around the vessel as well as behind it. This also helps the fire crew with the refill of the dry chemical agent. All right, perfect. Well, now, so we can let Zach uh, make his way over to the front of the truck before we start before we start drilling him with questions. Uh, I wanted to mention a couple things here. Um, first of all, uh, 
something something to know about both the trucks that we're going to be looking at today. The R Frig is part of a 49 unit order, um, and uh, the industrial pumper is actually going to a place that has been a long time E1 customer. They've got over 100 E1 rigs in service today. Uh, this particular truck is part of a four unit order. So I first wanted to, while we wait for while we wait for Zach, wanted to make sure that uh, we we hit uh, 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 Jeff here. Jeff, just like yesterday, now that you've seen the video, just first impressions. Big. Um, industrial is is really in a world by itself. It it shares a bloodline with with what most of us are used to in the it, on the municipal side, but it's like you put the fire truck on steroids. And you can see um, the other thing that struck me with this industrial uh, pumper is that there's some. It's equipped with some things that you don't normally see on industrial pumpers, which I'm, I'm sure as we get into the Q&A with Zach, we will uh, we'll get into in a little bit more depth. But nice truck. One of the other things, I at least at least for my part, and I kind of mentioned this in the beginning, and hopefully uh, everybody who viewed it thought the same thing. That you know, you think of industrial, and you think, well, I'm, well, I'm not into that, but. Uh, but there are a, there are a number of options on here that I mean I could see in use uh, down down south you know in, in Texas you know uh, Arizona anywhere we've got where we've got some some oil refineries down there um, and those large industrial complexes but also but also things that we can use uh, on our own rigs that we're specking for more municipal uh, for more municipal responsibility so. Hopefully we've got Zach over in front of the truck. Jeff and I, uh, we've been kind of going back and forth with each other a little bit uh, with some questions for you. So before we open it up to Q&A from the audience, Zach, if, uh, if you're ready there, we'll, uh, we'd like to, like, like to see you over there at the truck. Okay, perfect. So Zach, you mentioned uh, the front bumper there. In this case, it's set up for, uh, some, hal for some Halmatro tools. Um, is it also possible for for E1 to, to plumb that for for cross lays and things like that on, on the industrial side? Have you seen that on the industrial side for anything? We did mention that this is a multi-purpose pumper, so you know not only are we doing rescue, uh, we're also doing. Uh, it also looks like we're doing some structural work with with the ladders and and uh, and hose cross lays. Yes, Chris. Uh, besides the Hamaltro tool configuration here, we do offer a cross lay option. Uh, just would have to be a 28-inch front bumper extension to accommodate that. Now, what uh, I'm going to let I'm going to let Jeff drive in just a minute here. I promised yesterday I would let him talk, and then I kept interrupting him. But I promised today, Jeff, I'm I'm well more I'm, I'm much better versed in, in letting other people talk today. So don't worry about that at all. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the differences between industrial fire apparatus and uh, and differences between industrial and structural but as well as, as their similarities. Could you, could you comment on that a little bit? Yes, yeah, so the differences are that the industrial is gonna have a larger pump, larger discharges, uh, also a larger deck gun. Uh, and we're gonna also carry more foam than water. Uh, the similarities are gonna be just basically like the cab, warning light options, and also uh, scene light options as well. All right, Jeff, why don't you take Sir it away? I know you had a number of questions. Zach, well, um, while we're on the pump, you mentioned that this particular vehicle is equipped with a Hale 8FG um, rated at 2,000 gallons a minute. I'm wondering what some of your other pump options are and what some of the other GPM, maximum GPM options are in, in the industrial line. Yeah, so we have four different pump options. Uh, the one that you mentioned, the Hale 8FG, that has a maximum GPM rating at 3,500. And then we have the next one would be a Darley, which is the same GPM rating at 3,500. The third would be the Waterus with a 4,000 GPM rating. And then the final would be US Fire Pump with a 5,000 GPM rating. And your, uh, this particular vehicle uh, features a top mount pump panel. Are there, um, are there any rear mount pump panels available in the industrial line or is that something that, that hasn't uh, really worked its way into industrial yet? It's kind of a niche market. You, you won't see a lot of uh, rear mount uh, industrial pumps out there. So uh, typically it's gonna be a midship mount. Zach, you were talking about the, the VMUX system there. Um, 
And, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot more multiplex. I know uh, yesterday we discussed this a little bit. Um, E1 is, is almost uh, exclusively uh, multiplex these days. In this case, what is that VMUX system controlling? Can you, can, can you control any of the pump functions from the cab if you had to? Uh, again, just, just what is that controlling? So the VMUX won't control any pump operations at all. You can control the warning light packages. You can control multiple scene light options. It'll actually show you your seating uh, configuration, who's wearing their seat belts, and, and so on. Okay, and I wanted to see um, if you could actually start making your way over to that pump panel right now, if, we, if you can get up there. We had a couple of questions about the pump, about the, the deck gun as well. While you are working your way over there, I'd like to ask Larry uh, about some of the other some of the other industrial applications and some of the other industrial pumper options uh, that that maybe we're not seeing here that that are available uh, uh, from E1. Larry, could you discuss that with us? Morning, Chris. Uh, good question. Thank you for that. The uh, the industrial line, like everything we do here at E1, is pretty much custom built for the end user. So the industrials encompass everything from commercial chassis to custom chassis, side mount, top mount applications, um, the occasional rear mount that Zach spoke about. And it even gets over into our aerial product line with some straight stick aerials and aerial platforms that are capable of that 2000 GPM rating as well. Um, as pointed out, this truck features a lot of municipal options. So again, speaking to the customization with the hydraulic reels on the front, the light tower on top of the cab, um, booster reel, the ladder rack on the side. So again, fully customizable to meet that end user's needs. Larry, on uh, uh, no, go ahead, Jeff. Go, uh, on a broader question on the on the E1 um, on the E1 line, both industrial and municipal, um, we've we've spoken a lot with um, about um, the extruded aluminum body, which is is really a hallmark of of E1's construction practice. Do you have stainless steel options available? Or, and if yes, are they extruded? Are they formed either or, depending on the customer's demand? Uh, absolutely, we have a, a fully uh, full steel, uh, stainless steel product line for bodies. Uh, those are built in our Hamburg, New York facility and it utilizes a tubular stainless steel, uh, full stainless steel substructure with a formed stainless steel body. Um, so it gives us the ability to build an extruded aluminum or stainless steel, and uh, both products are fully customizable to the end user's needs. One thing between yesterday and today is we've seen we've seen the Typhoon uh, cabs and chassis um, on on all the rigs that we that we've looked at so far. What um, what, what what other options are, are are industrial rigs available on uh, other the uh, other E1 chassis as well? Uh, yes, sir. The Saudi Aramco truck actually has a Cyclone chassis, and uh, we have a 100-inch wide cab um, Quest chassis that's available in the industrial application as well. So each of these trucks can be built across the full line of E1 custom chassis. Okay. Um, what was the what was the engine on this one again? Uh, I, I know I know Zach mentioned it uh, just just for our viewers here. And, and what are some of the other options that are available? Typically with the industrials, due to the pumping capability or the pump size requirements, they tend to run in the X12 and X15 Cummins size, uh, 500 horsepower and up. Okay. Do you have some of those, uh, one of the trucks we looked at yesterday, uh, or, or it might have been, it actually might have been the, the, the other one that was in the, um, in the, um, in the booth area uh, for E1 uh, in, in, the, uh, in the portal. Um, talked about that that uh, the the shorter engine tunnel uh, are those types of are those types of uh, things available as well? So the uh, the shorter engine tunnel, the uh, the rear the reduced profile on the engine tunnel is typically an L9 motor. It's the smaller L9 450 horsepower engine. Uh, the truck you referenced happened to be for Virginia Beach, and being able to tuck that engine cover up closer to the rear of the motor. Uh, provides about an additional nine to ten inches of floor space in the rear of the cab for more space, more maneuverability, more storage, more seating options. All right, thanks, thanks, Larry. Hopefully, hopefully that gave Zach enough time to climb up onto that uh, onto that top mount. Hopefully, we've got the the uh, the videographer up there as well. 
Uh, Zach, if you could open that up for us. We had a couple of questions about the, the pump panel itself. Um, one of them, it's just a pretty general, uh, just with this one, are those all electronic uh, valves? Are there any manual? Uh, I guess almost just from, from your perspective, what are you seeing these days more of uh, with, the, with, with, with the electronic valves? I know for, for my fire company, a lot of times when we have gone to the electronic valves, it's been to shrink down the, uh, the size of the pump panel. Uh, we usually have a side mount pump panel. But also, uh, we did start switching all of our LDH, uh, either discharges or intakes, and also our, our deck guns up top with the electronic valves. So uh, just wanted to see what, what, what's going on on this pump panel, and do you see uh, a, a, a preference for electronics on the industrial side versus uh, on the municipal side? I know there's still a lot of people who like those push-pull valves. Uh, even though even though sometimes they're not even getting the push pull valve, they're really getting something that's electronic in the back. But um, and and do you uh, uh, w what are you seeing? Do you see more of a combination or a preference for one or the other? Well, it's actually just a customer preference. Uh, Ramco likes to deal with electric valves. Um, they do have a, some small uh, manual valves here, but typically with a Ramco, we're all going to do all electric. And that monitor, you mentioned the monitor in the video. Uh, what is the what is the the uh, the GPM on that? The uh, the, and could you just mention the uh, mention the uh, manufacturer yes. of that again? So that's an Elkhart uh, 7400 Scorpion that has a 2,000 GPM rating. Uh, the nozzle you'll see is a Ranger 2.0 Hydrochem nozzle. Uh, Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, and and uh, Zach, I wanted to talk monitor, real quick. Uh, excuse me, Chris. On that monitor, Zach, um, control stations for it, are, are, is that controlled from the pump panel? Um, are there remote options available? Does, is that controlled from somewhere other than the pump panel? So we have two options here. We have a remote control here that's mounted to the top mount panel here. And the second option is a remote control that you can locate anywhere on the truck. Uh, this customer chose L1 forward wall, so they can get away from the truck, you know, walk around, be able to see the whole fire scene and operate that, that monitor with that remote control. So the, the, secondary, now, the secondary control station is wireless then? Yes, sir. What's the distance you can go uh, wireless? About like maybe like, say like 150 feet? Is that, is that a pretty good range for that? Because you know, any anytime we're doing some industrial firefighting, it's it's nine times out of ten not going to be something we want to be anywhere near in terms of uh, in terms of what what's what's burning off of it. You're correct. Yes, uh, you can go all the way out to 150 feet. You know, to get a full fire scene, be able to knock down that fire. Okay. Now on the on the uh, on the the driver's side pump panel area, I saw three intakes uh, uh, in the video. What are the size of those intakes? So we have three large six inch intakes on that side. We also have two two and a half inch intakes, one three inch foam intake, and then two, a two and a half inch direct tank fill. So on this truck, a Ramco, they like to do discharges on their driver, or intakes on the driver's side and discharges on their officer side. Okay, and did, is, there, is there a hose bed on there? And what's the capacity of that hose bed? Yes, there is a hose bed on this truck. We have a total of 600 feet of three inch, 1,000 feet of five inch, and then 200 feet of inch and three quarter. Okay, and I, I, hate to, I hate to cut Jeff off, who looks like he's chomping at the bit there to ask one more question. Jeff, I'll try to get back to you in, in a few, but we do have some, uh, some questions coming in from the audience. Um, uh, going back to you, Zach, where you are, stay up there on that pump panel because we have a question from the audience uh, specifically about where you're at. Um, hopefully you didn't jump down. Uh, they wanted to know uh, in the dunnage area ahead of the monitor, uh, there was there was an orange uh, item there. Uh, what is that orange item? That orange item is actually the Homotro system. That's going to be a three tool system. We'll have two of the reels in the front bumper like I showed in the video. And the third reel is actually going to be in the L4 compartment. Now, since the L4 compartment is much larger, we can actually incorporate a 100-foot reel in that, in that area. Okay. And the, uh, the, uh, the light tower, how, how high does that go? 
Light tower goes up to 60 feet. Okay, and could you just uh, uh, mention the uh, the LDH uh, supply line capacity again? What, could you just go through those one more time in the hose bed? Yeah, so we have a total of uh, 600 feet of three inch, we have 1,000 feet of five inch, and then also 200 feet of inch and three quarter. Okay, and Jeff, before we before we cut over to the R frig, I'm sure I'm sure Zach's like, thank God, thank God, I'm almost done. Don't have to don't have to be on camera anymore. But um, Jeff, you had you had a question as we were as we were uh, at, at, right before I cut you off, basically. I have two, Zach. Um, one, uh, some of the some of the unique um, hot weather features because of where this truck is going, that that uh, um can be shared and, and also probably applicable to to very cold weather areas. You mentioned the cab insulation package. Um, I'm sure that, you know, uh, Canadian application, northern United States, Alaska, um, and enhanced. So that's going to either keep the maximum cooling capacity or help heat that cab, depending on which application you're going to use it for. And that, um, yeah. that uh, roll up door over the pump panel, you know, for. Uh, Anybody in the snow belt where, where with all this, the road uh, wash that kicks up in the winter months, that would be, that would be a terrific item for protecting um, pump panels in, in northern areas. Um, you mentioned the, the cord reel in the L4 compartment. Um, a 100-foot hydraulic cord reel in and of itself is, is uh, got a lot of, of functional um, latitude to it but Larry um, talked yesterday on your compartment interiors and uh, the one going to Bullhead Arizona with the uh, with the uh, uh, burnished interiors and light reflection can can you comment on some of your compartment interior finishes and and what the options are on those other other than that burnishing jump in with uh, a couple of comments while they transition there to look at the compartment interior. Uh, you brought up the insulation package. That's a really interesting uh, and re really interesting question. That insulation package is used in, as you said, not only the hotter climates, but the colder climates. We've traditionally provided industrial products all throughout the United States and around the world, including our friends in the Canadian market. We have two trucks on order right now that are in production for Suncor Energy and Fort McMurray as well. So uh, those those cold weather packages and hot weather packages uh, work very well together. Now, while we wait for Zach to get over there, I don't know if he's over there just yet. Um, there usually when it rains, it pours. So we did have a few more questions come in from the audience, and I think this is one he can answer as he's repositioning. Are industrial trucks usually in line with NFPA 1901, or are there common exceptions taken to make the truck function in its intended application? Uh, Zach, if you can answer it, that's fine. Larry, if you want to take that one, that's fine too. So uh, they can, again, depending on where they're going to be used, uh, we have several cities that buy trucks that have uh, industrial application to them, and those will meet the NFPA 1901 requirements, and then they might have a bigger foam system. Um, we're actually working on a couple of trucks for city fire departments now that will have a dry chem system. So uh, again, it's 1901, and then it'll step outside of that when, when they need to meet a specific requirement. All right, Jeff, if you wanted to take it back to your compartment question with Zach now, I think, I think, he's, all, I think he's all set up and ready to go. Jeff? Zach, um, com compartment interior finishes. We, we saw the burnished yesterday on, on Bullhead, Arizona. Um, what other interior finishes is E1 offering for their compartmentation? Over, uh, line X and uh, other uh, uh, Line X finishes as well for the interior. That's, uh, that's quite a sill protector. Are they all uh, yeah. customizable to that degree? I thought we were looking at E1 trucks yes, this sir. week. I thought we were looking at E1 trucks this week. What, what, what is this? Now, I actually have another uh, question here for you, Zach, uh, about foam systems. What are, the, uh, what are the foam systems that you offer for your industrial rigs? 
For, for the Class B film system, we're offering the Hotshot 2 system that we have on this feature, and then also the Acumax Foam Pro. Okay, and uh, that about wraps it up for the audience. Jeff, if you had any more follow-up questions, ask them now, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head over to the ARF rig, and, and now Zach really will be let off the hook. Just, uh, just one more for you, Zach. Um, you know, this, this truck is, is really quite a, quite a, a large rig. And, um, I know, you know, it is on a tandem rear axle is, is tandem axle construction fairly common for your industrial, uh, pumpers, or is this one a little bit unique in that aspect? It's uh, a good question. Actually, our industrials, are typically 80% on a single axle. Well, we had to go to a tandem axle on this because of the tank capacity increased the weight. Then also our wheelbase is 274 inches. So that weight has distributed and really had to bump us up to that tandem axle. All thank right, you. perfect. Well, Zach, thank you very much for taking some time out with us. I know I know we put you live. Yes. Maybe, maybe when they asked you to do the video, you were thinking that was all, but uh, but thank you very much for taking the time out with us today. I'd like to uh, get the get the ARF rig so then we can a little bit, Zach. Uh, we might have some questions for you at the end, but for now, let's let's head over to the ARF rig video. I'm Derek Dias with E1. I'm, a, I'm our government and our sales representative, and today I just want to go over the E1 Titan P8 air transportable ARF vehicle. Some of the key features of this vehicle is the 500 horsepower Cummins engine, the Cushman power divider, and the Allison transmission. The truck also features a Darley PSP pump, the Akron bumper turret that's rated at 375 low flow. 750 GPM high flow. I also have the Orlaco thermal imaging camera at the top of the vehicle. Another one of the unique features on this air transportable product is the tie downs uh, that are located on the truck. 14 tie downs located around the unit. These are all used for being able to tie the truck down when it's in, tra in transport on a C-130 aircraft. Uh, the vehicle will also be capable of being transported on a C-5 or C-17 aircraft as well. Now we're going to take a look at the cab. This cab is designed to seat up to four people. Uh, this specification has, uh, has seating for three, along with some extra SCBA storage. Uh, there's also a center console located right in the middle of the cab. Uh, that's where all your uh, main switching, uh, turret uh, controls, and the center screens for all your functionality. Uh, another unique feature on this truck is we have a, a Hen A reel with 150 feet of one inch. Uh, this particular nozzle shoots six to eight pounds of dry cam per minute. The vessel uh, that powers all this is a, a fire combat 250 pound dry cam vessel. This truck also features on the driver's side of the vehicle a structural pump panel package. It's gonna have a four and a half inch suction, a two and a half inch pony suction, two and a half inch discharge, four and a half inch direct tank fill, and a two and a half inch direct tank fill. You also have your inch and a half uh, foam fill drain. All this is controlled through this uh, touch touchscreen panel here. Uh, you'll be able to turn on your water pump, your foam pump, do your foam transfer pump to be able to fill you know, from a five gallon pail or a 55 uh, gallon drum to fill your foam drain. We also have our onboard Ecologic system and that allows you to do all of your annual testing without putting any foam on the ground. It will end up doing that testing with uh, just using water only. This truck also features lots of available compartment storage. So you have two dedicated compartments on each side of the truck that will be open for storage of equipment and tools. As you can see, you know, roll-up doors, LED lighting on each side, and the turtle tile on the bottom of the floor to facilitate draining you know, of any equipment that you put back in the vehicle wet. They have a 100-foot air reel, and this truck also features the Ward No Smoke exhaust system. But here at the rear of the vehicle, we have a large uh, rear ladder access that will allow you to get up to the top deck of the vehicle where there is a, a large single handle engine access door that will allow you to get down into the engine compartment for, to do all your general maintenance and fluid checks for the day. You also have access to your fill towers, your water and your foam tower, and access to your dry chemical vessel for 
refill operations. Another unique feature to this vehicle is the ability for uh, the air system to, to dump to allow the vehicle to meet the height for the air transportability. This is the officer side pump panel, bumper turret manual override, the two and a half inch discharge, an inch and a half foam fill drain, a four and a half inch direct tank fill, and a two and a half inch direct tank fill. We also have on this side the 220 cubic foot nitrogen bottle, which acts as your propelling agent. Uh, to allow the dry chemical vessel to be charged and force the dry chem out of the hose reel on the other side of the vehicle. Thanks for joining us today for the Rev Fire Group Expo uh, for the walk around on the C1 Titan P8 air transportable ARF vehicle. All right. Welcome, Derek. Now it's now it's your turn. You're 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 uh, you're facing the firing squad, as it were. Hey, so uh, I wanted to start off with this in talking about yesterday when, when we were talking about the HR100 and and the custom uh, and the custom pumper. We talked about trade-offs. Uh, just about everything. When 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 you want one thing in an apparatus design, a lot of times you have to lose something else or you have to gain something. There's always these give and takes with that. And this is a very unique design that, that, that E1 had to come up with for this to make it air transportable. So I was wondering if you could just uh, touch on some of the engineering challenges that, that you guys had when you were, when you were coming up with, with the design for this to make it uh, to, you know, to really fulfill the, what the customer was asking for. Right. I, yeah, I mean, this is one of uh, 49 units for the Air Force. And so we had to work closely with them around the requirements for it to be air transportable in a C-130, a C-17, or a C-5 aircraft. Uh, the C-130 presents the biggest challenges because it's the smallest aircraft. Uh, so there's some unique requirements as far as dimensions. So the truck can't be any longer than one, uh, 335 inches, no wider than 104 inches, and no taller than 105 inches. And then it can weigh no more than 13,000 pounds per axle when it goes onto the C-130 because of the floor rating. So there's a lot of unique challenges that are presented in this. And then also on the ARF, whenever you're looking at NFPA 414, you have to be able to have no more than 10% difference front to rear on the vehicle and no more than 5% side to side. So it's a, it's a real delicate uh, balance, you know, just trying to make sure that the, the truck fits all the different characteristics, not only of the NFPA standards, but also the, all the customers. One of the most unique uh, features on there was the ability for the whole truck to, uh, to, to lower. Um, just wanted to see what the, it, it, it might not even be an issue, but what, uh, in terms of maneuvering that vehicle once it's lowered, are there any limitations? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, obviously you're not going to lower it and then, you know, go blasting out of a, of a, of a hangar in order to, to put something out. But um, what are, what, are the, uh, what, what limitations, if any, are there in terms of, uh, of operating the vehicle once it's lowered? Is it just a straight back-to-back -back kind of thing, or uh, uh, is, is, does it still have full steering capability? Right. All right, so whenever you're in normal operation mode, obviously you know, it's, four, it's full four-wheel drive all the time. You know, max speed of 70 plus miles an hour and you know, just full off-road capability. Once you go into air transportable mode, you're still going to have full range of function. It's just going to be at a slower speed because you know, once you drop the, the axle, uh, the air, air suspension down, you know, you're going to have uh, just a little bit of limited capability. You're only going to want to do about 5, 10 miles an hour basically at an idle, but it'll, it'll still allow you to steer and turn you know, to reposition the vehicle to get it lined up to go. Okay, I've got plane. some questions coming up for me uh, about the pump panel, but before we get into that, I wanted to let Jeff uh, come in with, with some of his questions. I know he had a few, some, some more general and, and some specific about the rig. Jeff? Impressive rig, Derek. Um, I, I'm wondering about some of the design challenges uh, and and maybe some, some numbers on, on exactly where you differ from from say your Titan 1500 um, because of because of the mandate that this be air transportable. You know, typically when somebody walks up to an ARF rig, um, one of the things that's striking about them is their size, um, not only in height but in length and width. Um, 
to get this to get this in an aircraft fuselage, how much narrower than is is this than a uh, than a traditional R, R frig? All right, so the traditional four by six six by the fifteen hundred and three thousand gallon vehicles are typically about one hundred and twenty inches wide, skin to skin. Uh, this this unit is a uh, is a hundred inches wide, skin to skin. But I know overall we've tried to keep the the look, form, and function of it you know, pretty similar to what you would see across, you know, even the full-size vehicles. So, um, you know, I mean, the, the normal size trucks usually have about a 29,000 to 31,000 pound front axle and rear axle. You know, these are 21,000 pound axles. So um, it's just more around the, the form, fit, and functionality of the vehicle and just trying to keep it in, into the, you know, the requirements of 414 and what the customer's expectations are. So, um, but even with the narrow cab, we're still able to get, you know, uh, a full four-person four cab. Uh, we're able to do, you know, keep the ergonomics. So you still have your center console where you have all your main controls and everything's still all within reach of the driver. So, you know, you can get to all the functionality of the park brake, the transmission, uh, have all of his pump functions and everything and turret controls and touchscreen monitors you know, to, to operate all the lighting features and other functionality of the vehicle. Any plans to, uh, to offer um, a vehicle in this format in a 6x6 or 8x8 configuration? Uh, with this, this customer's unique configuration, I mean, the 4x4 is the one that's going to fit onto a, you know, a C-130 platform uh, when you get into a little bit of the bigger ones. Uh, those don't typically fit onto a C-130. Uh, you'd be more of a C-5, C-17. So for this particular one, we're, we're in a 4x4 four four, uh, configuration. Okay, now I, would, uh, I, I do have a couple of questions about the pump panel itself, uh, some of the controls, and I also wanted to get into to, to Ecologic a little bit. But before, before <clears throat> we get into that, Larry, I was hoping, and while, while you get yourself set up there, Derek, be able to answer uh, or just just comment on some of the different uh, ARF offerings that, that E1 has, uh, particularly on the Titan line. Derek's done a really nice job here of outlining this uh, air transportable truck, uh, as he said earlier, was one of 49 units for the United States Air Force. We also offer a 1500 gallon version, four by four, the full size Titan, uh, four by four. And then we also offer a 3000 gallon on a six by six. Those are available in dual combination and triple combination applications with foam, water, and dry chem. And uh, to a degree can be customizable like most of our products. Um, the ARF product uh, is particularly like a box. Once you put certain things in that box or move things around, you're somewhat limited to what you can do space-wise and weight-wise. The weight requirements are very restrictive um, as far as NFPA goes, so it, it limits a little bit what we can do inside those compartments and with some of that space that we have to work with. Okay, perfect. Derek, if you are ready at the pump panel, I had a couple of questions about that, um, about, about, about that area. First of all, um, you mentioned in the video the control system for the pump. Uh, I wasn't sure. I couldn't tell from looking at it. Is that a, is that a proprietary control system for E1? Is it, or is it a different control system? Could you talk a little bit more about that? Hi, the control system on here is full touch screen. So you're able to operate your pump, your dry cam, your foam, everything just at a touch of a button here at the, at the panel. And it's a, a system that we worked in conjunction with a partner of ours. Um, yeah, so this one's uh, the system overall is a little unique in that it's the, the first vehicle that we've done a CAN bus, an electrical system. So something you would typically see like in your, in your vehicle, like a, you know, a Ford or a Chevy or a Toyota type vehicle. All those are wired as CAN bus. So the overall electrical system is what we call a motoplex electrical system instead of a multiplex. Okay, while you're there, um, we got a question from the audience, and, and I also uh, was hoping you could touch a little bit more on the Ecologic system. And the reason I bring that up is because that's a particularly important uh, system today with regard to a lot of, you know, uh, Jeff said earlier, 
uh, when we were talking. You know, uh, a lot of it, it, it's not always good press right now uh, for foam, and uh, the EcoLogic system really does, really, really does address that. So I was hoping you could go over that in a little bit more detail. So the Ecologic is a patented uh, foam testing system for E1, and what it allows you to do is to test your, your foam system, but instead of dispersing foam into the environment, it gives you the ability to test to make sure that your system's functioning the way that it should by dispersing water through the foam system to, to test it and make sure that you're hitting the percentages of foam that you're expecting out of each of the discharge points. Okay, and I... <clears throat> Uh, before I get into more audience q and I wanted to make sure Jeff uh, had gotten uh, all, of, all of his questions and comments out there. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything further? Uh, Derek, is the body on this uh, apparatus a poly body or an aluminum body? It's a combination of the two. So basically on the, the water tank, it's kind of a wet side design, so the outer skin of it is poly. The, you know, the cab and the rear body section are, are extruded aluminum and an aluminum plate. So, you know, it's all 3 16 aluminum uh, along with the 3 16 aluminum extrusions. Uh, so, it's a, it's a combination. And in, in Larry's comments, um, he mentioned some of the restrictions that, NF, uh, that the FAA has on, uh, on weight and, and uh, other things. How does that affect the the um, versatility of compartment design and the variations that may be available on, on an r freak so, so unlike the municipal market where you can usually customize, make compartments larger, smaller, uh, to fit certain uh, functionality, on an ARF vehicle, the way that the, everything is designed is to meet the 10% you know, front to back, 5% side to side. Um, requirements so the the compartments are pretty much in a fixed position I we can do a, a slight bit of customization but they're pretty pretty locked in where they are just so that the weight distribution of the vehicle meets the requirements of NFPA 414 thank you and good we, we've got a number of another great discussion today uh, um, among the audience and and, and our host here um, one quick question kind of goes back to the eco logic. You don't have to, to open it up every, uh, everything again if you don't need to, but said, could you test the foam system on the industrial model as well using eco logic? So the, the eco logic is kind of designed more around a, an around the pump foam system. So something like the industrial pumper, which does have an around the pump foam system, uh, could be retrofitted to you know, test with the, with the Ecologic. So, you know, we offer both the onboard, like the Air Force vehicle here has, and then we also have a mobile test cart so that you could retrofit and test more than one vehicle, you know, if you have multiple vehicles in your fleet. I have a question here about the air suspension. What, what, is, what brand air suspension is used on, on the ARF, and what is the weight rating on it? Uh, the, the, the rating on the vehicle, I mean, the... The front axle and the rear axle are both rated at 21,000 pounds. Uh, it's, a, it's a Hendrickson air ride suspension uh, and it's controlled by a valve on the other side of the vehicle that would allow the vehicle to drop down when it goes into air transportable mode. Okay, and I just wanted to mention real quick for anyone out there who is commenting in the Q&A about the length of my hair, your comments are not going unnoticed. I'm bringing the mullet back. That is my goal here. <laughs> you know, COVID-19 allowed me to see what I can do here to bring the mullet back and bring it, bring it back to the, to the forefront of styling. So just wanted to throw that out there before I get into any more Q&A &A, Q &A questions. Uh, before I'm, the next I'm, one. I'm faced with the same challenges, Chris. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I can tell. Um, wanted to ask real quick how much, uh, and you may have touched on this in the video, but if you could hit it again. How much foam and water does uh, does this ARF unit carry? So this this particular truck has a it's a a thousand gallons of water and 140 gallons of foam. Uh, the the foam tank is designed and the water tank design is so that at a six percent capacity uh, when they're using foam that they get two tank loads of water per tank load of foam. 
So there, this particular truck set up for 3% foam, so they'll actually have the ability to get four tank loads of water per tank load of foam. Okay, and what is the, uh, we have one here from, uh, from David, what is the pump output top speed and maximum permissible weight? So the, the overall GVW of the vehicle is 42,000 pounds. The top speed, uh, the vehicle has to be able to meet at least 70 miles per hour. Uh, these vehicles typically test out at about 72 to 73 miles per hour as the top speed. The, um, in the video, you mentioned uh, the power divider. I believe, that, I believe that's what you called it. Um, could you touch on that, talk a little bit more and ex explain Correct. what that is and how it works and, and, why, and why it's on the rig? So I mean, the purpose of the power divider is so that you can power the wheels so that the vehicle can still move, but also distribute some of that power to the pump so that you have pump and roll capabilities. So the unique, uniqueness about the ARF truck is that it's, it's a full off-road capability, but you can also flow out of the bumper turret while you're maneuvering the truck and positioning at different points around an aircraft or other type of fire that this may respond to. Okay, and another here. Um, what type of central tire inflation systems are available for high mobility challenging terrains? Uh, so this particular vehicle doesn't have uh, the central tire inflation system, but uh, we have used uh, some other uh, products in the past uh, to where, you know, when you're not hooked into the station air, like, you know, Normally, like when you're in the station, you're going to be plugged into like an auto eject or you're going to have an onboard compressor that's going to keep the brake system going, um, keep everything inflated the way it needs to be. But the central tire inflation system would you know, allow you to inflate or deflate the tires depending on the type of terrain that you may go over. Um, but it's, it's something that is an optional feature on the ARF truck, but not something that I see widely used. Could you talk a Talk a little bit more about the ward no smoke. Just just touch on that. Explain, just, uh, explain, explain what it is. Why why it was more appropriate for this rig. Um, yeah, so you have a control box here that's going to show you you know the hours and everything on uh, of use on the ward no smoke. And then you got a, a system or a switcher where you can turn the uh, system off so that you can change out the filter. Uh, but the purpose of the word no smoke is that instead of cranking the vehicle and allowing the exhaust to go throughout the station, it captures all that particulate and exhaust and through the filter system that's on the other side of this wall here and keeps all that exhaust and the particulate out of the, out of the fire station. And so once they pull out, you know, the, it stays intact for a certain duration uh, while well, once you first crank it, it stays in, you know, active for about 30 seconds or so while it's in the, in the station. It gives you a chance to get in the vehicle and get out and keep all the, the pollutants and particulates out of the, out of the station where you don't want them. Okay, so. Derek. Well, thank you very, very much. You are now off the hook. You can, uh, you can go relax a little bit. Uh, I wanted to touch on a couple of things here before I turn it back over to Mike. Uh, who wanted to say a few words. Just wanted to hit real quick on what's happening uh, for the rest of today. From 11 to 3.30, the Rev Showroom is open. Rev Showroom meetings with E1 representatives will be available. So if we couldn't get to your question today, those those showroom meetings are a real good opportunity to meet up with, with, uh, with a Rev representative there uh, to, to get those more specific uh, questions answered. We'll have a quick wrap up today, Facebook Live. We'll do a quick wrap, wrap up uh, for 4.30 today. I uh, wanted to talk real quick again about next week. Uh, somehow Ferrera snuck in here today, but uh, just, just to kind of give us a taste of what's coming. But um, next Monday and Tuesday, uh, we're going to have a, a two, uh, we'll have four Ferrera Live walk arounds webinar, May Day, Monday. Uh, May Day Monday, it's going to be survival tips, safety and survival tips for firefighters. That will take place at one o'clock. So that's our FDIC powered webinar. Uh, and again, uh, from 11 to one, we'll have the Rev showroom meeting. So let me go back and explain this again, since I've now jumped all over the place with the times. 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, Ferrara live walk around. 11 to one, Rev showroom meetings with Ferrara representatives. 
1 to 2, we have an FDIC-powered webinar, May Day Monday. From 2 to 4.30, you'll have your Rev showroom meetings again. That's your opportunity to meet with Ferrara representatives next week uh, to, uh, to learn more about those rigs. And we'll have our, we'll our uh, wrap-ups. On Tuesday, we're going to do two Ferrara pumpers. Uh, there will be a Rev Group webinar, financing apparatus and, and purchasing options. So, uh, so there's going to be a little bit more education next Tuesday as well. Uh, before I throw it back over to Mike, I do want to thank Jeff, who uh, really, we, we talked a little bit in the beginning about, uh, about how we've sort of been pushed into more digital, uh, more digital solutions, and uh, he stepped up to the plate. He took the first one. It was the first uh, two days we've done this. Everybody else after this has an easy time because of the, because of the trail that Jeff plays this week. So, Jeff, I really want to thank you for stepping up to the plate for that. Uh, probably was a little nerve-wracking there for a little while until we got our rehearsals down, but once we did, I think everything everything worked out really well. So thanks thanks to you, Jeff. It's uh, it's been a it's been a great couple of days. It was really an enjoyable thing to uh, to participate in. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for coming in again. So uh, with that, I'd like to throw it back over to Mike real quick. Uh, Mike Vernig at the at the booth who uh, who had a few words he wanted to uh, put out there. Yeah, Chris. I just wanted to take a minute. Thank you thank jeff um zach derek larry and justin um we're not this isn't what we do every day this live tv it's pretty nerve-wracking and i think it's uh was a success and i can't wait for next week and for the ferrar guys to uh to come in and, and show what they have to do one other thing just to comment on we talked about the ecologic carts we have a rev parts division that actually sells those and we have experts available that can answer questions if you have questions. So go through the portal and uh, request information and we'll have the experts get in touch with you on that. And with that, I just hope uh, invite you all back next week and see you, see you on Monday. Don't forget that with uh, everything that we've done this week, you just need to log in uh, to see the on-demand webinars. This one will be uh, available later today, but uh, if you log back in, uh, you will be able to see today's and all of yesterday's. Again, this is this has been the Rev uh, Fire Group Conference and Expo. This week we have covered E1, uh, the E1 brand. We'll be covering all all the Rev Fire Group brands over the next several weeks. So once again, it's been my pleasure to be here. Chris McClune, Fire Apparatus and Emergency Equipment for the Rev Fire Group Conference and Expo. Have a good one and stay safe.